Hi, I'm David Strom, Editor-in-Chief of Tom's Hardware, and I'm here in a very unusual minivan with Damien Stolarz from CarBotPC.com. Hello. Damien, why don't you tell us what you've got here? Well, uh, a couple of years ago when I started CarBot, one of the things I was grieving was there was no sub-$500 in-car computer. So we wound up having to build one, and, you know, there's this whole vibrant aftermarket. Well. Uh, Macintosh, I believe somewhat inadvertently, came out with a what they call single DIN size, sub $500, powerful DVD playing, MP3 playing computer called the Mac Mini. So this is an ordinary Mac Mini in your minivan. Absolutely. What do you have to do to put this in the dash and integrate it with your audio components? Well, lucky thing for me is I've been doing this for a couple of years, so I know the expertise. But the um, the complicated thing is, it's not so complicated if you know cars, but the thing is computer guys don't know cars and car guys don't know computers. So there's a bit of an information divide there. Let's install, which is to get an inverter. An inverter, which is located right here, simply gives you wall plugs in your car. So I went to an installer, I went to uh, a good guy's uh, in Canoga Park, and they installed that inverter right there. And you see it says output 115 volts AC. And it's just got a switch right there. And it's got two power cords. One is going to the Mac Mini, and then one of them is going to this screen up here. Now, does this inverter drain a lot of your battery power when you're, when you're parked and the car is off? I also upgraded my battery. So there's a, uh, a company called Optima that makes great batteries, and then, you know, they're branded by various others. But I went and upgraded to what's called a deep cycle battery so that I don't run out of it. Up. I've run this Mac Mini for... I believe five hours, and I was still able to start the car afterwards. The power switch for the Mac Mini is on the back, so how do you turn the thing on? Now that's the little bit of soldering that I did do. If you look right here, you'll see that I have a little cheater button. That's your standard PC button. And what I did was I didn't want to mess with the Mac Mini motherboard at all. So I took, we can look at it later, but I took the back of the Mac Mini, I took the little power switch, and I went in behind it and soldered just a pair of wires coming out of it. And then I connected those to a standard PC toggle switch that I then ran. So behind there is just, you know, your green and white cable just like you find inside a PC case. Uh, that's the one cheater element. Um, you know, I eventually want to mount it here with a nice push button. But I actually know other solutions that automatically turn on and turn off the stuff. So that, that's my eventual destination is we won't even need that button at all. As soon as you turn on the keys, uh, it'll turn on. Now, the other special thing we have here is the uh, screen. It's this fold down. Yeah, screen. so I, to fold down this screen, I just push it and fold it down like that. Uh, using these buttons, I can just press this and it'll launch iTunes, if I'm not mistaken. And I can just press play. So, you know. To heck with iPod integration. I have iTunes integration in my car. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry, but my car is the digital hub. It's not an accessory to my iPod. <laughs> sorry to say. So I can I can play whatever I want on this, including DivX video and what with mounting. And I've gone through two or three designs, but it, it basically only took me a couple days. And I went. The first one I bought was an Omni mount, which is a beautiful screen, and you can even see the evidence of it in these three holes here. And the Omni mount worked great, but you actually pull down and push up on the Omni mount. So it was kind of like I was taking a crowbar to the plastic that's under here. So this solution is much better. The um, if if each of these holes, each of these bumps right here is a cross rib or a cross member. That's the solid metal. You sort of in the it's the same as in your house. You look for a beam, and right. you don't want to hang your picture on drywall because it might just fall out. So I found the metal beam. And it already had a hole, so I just took a, a clip that had a, uh, a nut on the back, and I screwed the bolt in. And this is a, uh, a standard uh, ceiling undermount that you can get. I think I spent about $80 at uh, Home Depot. You don't know, but anyone at PC World probably knows that all the LCDs have a standard bolt pattern. So, uh, and the nice thing is this screen cost me $199 at Fry's. I actually had a 17-inch for $250 before, but it was way too big. Uh, so we scaled down to 15 inch. But if you look at $80 plus $199, I have HDTV for my passengers. Get the wires from the screen over to the computer. It, it wound up being easier than you think. When you go to an installer, you'll find that all the cars nowadays, these panels just pull off. So I'll, I'll just demonstrate for the faint of heart. But if you just pull this, it comes right off. And if you just reach here, 
pull this, it comes right out. Now that's the you, you, first you're scary, and I didn't want to do it either. But I went into good guys, and I said I want to install all this stuff. First thing he does is start doing this. Now there's some tricky stuff, like when you're pulling off these, you use a little special fork tool that you can get, but you know, like a nail remover. But the point is, um, the cars today are all designed to just sort of pull apart and click back together. So it's once you pull this off, you ran. we ran the uh, power wires. I kind of broke the rules because you're supposed to run video up this side and power up this side so they don't interfere with each other. I went up the, fr uh, up the same column, and as a result, I had to do a lot more debugging to get rid of the buzz. A USB yeah. hub. Now, you know, I ran two USB because there's two USBs here, and I labeled them, so I have number one here and number two is, still can be used. Um, I have the key point, which is just the receiver for here, and you see I just have a Belkin U USB re receiver. That allows me to use this keyboard. I have a, this is the Apple Bluetooth, Bluetooth keyboard. I have a Bluetooth mouse over there. And so it allows you to stow, this car is already good at that because it has the stowaway, it's like a Millennium Falcon, you can put things under here and you never see it. You know them. what, if someone steals this screen, they don't realize that they've stolen like the cheapest part of the install, you know, and it's probably the showiest part, whereas, the, you know, the thing I don't want them to, you know, do is tear up this, all this work I did, right. but, but the nice thing is, is, um, for, for something you're going to use every day, you actually want it to kind of blend in. You don't want that steal me look, and you also don't want your wife going, well, why is there a wire there, and a wire there, and a wire there, and a wire there? Because you know, the Mac Mini is the exact dimensions of what they call one DIN, uh, the standard size for PC or, uh, car radios, rather. Um, the, this coin slot is basically that slot. This is six and a half inches wide. This slot is seven inches. And we just have a little bit of foamy carpet which kind of fades into the background there. You know, the only problem is the Mac Mini is not flat on the front. But the, uh, the, the coin slot, all we did was, and you'll see pictures of this later, we just sliced it this way, sliced it this way, put some foam padding on both sides so it wouldn't scrape the Mini, put the Mini in, put a little brace behind it because it has to face downward. I actually insert the DVDs at a maybe a 15 degree angle up because the Mac Mini has to go like that. And, uh, and then the, the sides of that slot, pinch it and then you screw it in and it holds it in place. So uh, the, the Mac Mini is very rigidly installed. I mean, it's it's not going anywhere. So the fantastic thing is when I do need to do some productivity work, this is a this is a high-res screen. I can sit right here comfortably and run Word or something like that and get some work done. There's a lot of situations in my life where I'm driving around, my wife wants to run into Target, baby's sitting here, I'm sitting here, you know, we're trying to be entertained. That or, phone has 60 to 80 kilobit internet, so if I pop open Safari right here, you see right in the top it says connecting. So boom, I don't even have to think about it, I run Safari. Right here, there are two major screws. You don't want to lose your screws, so I'll just put the other one in the bucket. I have two screws on both sides of those, and we just have some black carpet foam that's protecting the Mac Mini against the clips of this case. I'll take this off. This was a coin slot tray that came with the caravan, and what we did was we used a Dremel tool, and we cut it here, cut it here, and used it to create a clip for the Mac Mini. Then I used double stick tape and this carpet foam. On the back, you can see we have the full array of Mac Mini connectors. You have the adapter to go to VGA, and here's the VGA cable that runs to the monitor up there. You have USB 1, USB 2, FireWire, which I have running to an iChat, one of the uh, iSight cams. One more thing on the Mac Mini. So if I pull him down, you can see the bottom of the Mac Mini is rubberized. And you can see a pair of wires I've run out of here. This is the what I was talking about, a yellow and white wires that I soldered to the switch, not to the motherboard. The switch connects to the motherboard through a little clip connector. Uh, pushes in. And then I have that extended. I have this tape so that it stays done. And then that green wire goes straight to this connector, which is a standard PC power switch. Okay, so there's there's your Mac now, Mini. the power aspects of the Mac Mini. Here's the 18 volt. By the way, it runs on 18 volts DC. 
which is annoying because if it ran on 12 volts, you could just plug it with a filter right into the into the car itself. If, so what we're going to do is we're going to go under here, and you can see how I've stashed the Mac Mini's power brick. Pulling this aside, you can see another assembly of The way I got the Mac Mini power installed is right here. I have the white cord that came with my Mac Mini. It's running under here and plugging into the top of this AC adapter. And then it's plugging into the relatively large uh, Mac Mini uh, power adapter, 85 watt. 18, and it's an 18 volt, 18.5 volts output, about 5 amps, and then it takes in 2 amps of input from a, a wall adapter. So luckily, behind here I have lots of room to shove these things in, so I found a slot that held this thing pretty firmly. I have going to there. Now that really thick red one and that really thick black one are the power cables, thick ones. I think that's 8 gauge, uh, thick wire that was run directly from the battery to the middle console. If you don't do that and you try and run the inverter off the cigarette lighters, it will just make beeping noises and it won't power the computer. You need thick enough wires to carry the, carry the power.